Those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Winston Churchill Now, the irony of this statement is that many people remember this. When Winston Churchill said this, many in my audience probably weren't alive when he did, but it was from a long, long time ago. But oddly enough, very specific events, much more relevant to our lives, from only 16 or 17 years ago, this is from World War II, people have completely blocked out. People have completely drawn a blank on. George Santayana wrote a book called Life of Reason in 1905, predating Winston Churchill, who said those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It is a slight distinction, but there is a major difference. And even before that, Edmund Burke wrote, those who don't know, pardon me, history, are destined to repeat it. Not knowing something, not remembering something, and failing to learn from something are three very, very different things. There are going to be folks who wake up November 7, and they're going to be shocked because they're going to have thought something completely different was going to happen. But what if I told you this all happened before and everybody has forgotten? I have seen absolutely no evidence in the mainstream media of anyone even bringing this up. Wait until I show you what I have to show you today. It's going to blow your mind. Real quick, as always, battlefield of the mind. A lot of people have tried to prepare for what's coming in the future by stockpiling food and weapons and ammunition and water and even medical supplies. They've read their Bibles, and I'm not saying any of those are bad ideas. But if you don't prepare your mind, if you don't exercise your mind, you're going to be helpless. Somebody's going to take all that from you. Somebody's going to cause you to do things act in certain ways, and believe things that are going to cost you dearly. If you'd like to get read in on the tactics, techniques, and methods for strengthening the mind, join us the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. It's only one single U.S. dollar per month. If it could be a dime, I'd charge a dime. It's just about the speed bump. It's even less than a dollar, though, if you sign up for an entire year, and it's fully refundable, first 90 days, hundreds of videos. Go over there, kick the tires, check it out. If it's not worth a dollar to you, check it out for a few months. And then, sometime around the, oh, I guess it would be what now, Thanksgiving? You could say, Florida Maki, I've given you a chance. I've given you three months, three dollars. Can I have my three dollars back? Absolutely not a problem. Thank you so much, all of you who have joined us over there. Let's get right into it. What if I told you, what if I told you that... The people on the left have a MAGA movement of their own. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? MAGA is Trump's... Well, technically it wasn't Trump's. He actually stole that from Reagan. But they have a Make America Great Again movement of their own. You see, for them, America was great from 2008 to 2016 when Barack Obama was president. And he is a major influencer in the campaign to elect Kamala Harris. Now, what are all of the arguments against Kamala Harris right now? She's she's an empty suit. She's uh, uh, not very bright. She's not doing any interviews. And, and all of these things that say she's unqualified. Well, guess what? Rush Limbaugh, rest his soul, Quote, there's nothing to Obama, nothing but platitudes. When it's time to get to the substance, we get contradictions and confusions. We don't think that he knows what he's talking about because it's true. He doesn't. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Rush Limbaugh again. Obama isn't just too big to fail. He's too big to know. Obama is so vital to the country and to the world, he must be kept out of the loop in order to save him from his failed presidency. Once again, did any of this move the needle? I know, I know, we'll call him a community organizer. We'll call him an unqualified community organizer, 
and John McCain will win. John McCain will win running away. And guess what the polls showed? This is from a research conducted on May 27th, 2008, 16 years ago. McCain and Romney were the number one, number two candidates back then. President Bush W. was getting ready to leave office. And McCain with virtually McCain-Romney against Obama-Webb, Obama-Cain, Obama-Biden, winning by double digits. Winning by double digits. McCain just and Obama by themselves plus four. It was a lock. McCain was going to absolutely kill him. Even even the most... uh, gratuitous polls from the left. This is March 6, 2008. John McCain, 262, Hillary Clinton, 276. It basically showed Barack Obama just doing moderately better. Just doing moderately better in a very close race with John McCain. But what do we know the reality to be? Everything McCain tried, failed. Drill, baby, drill. Failed. Calling him a community organizer. Failed. Calling him an empty suit. Failed. Was any of that true? Well, I guess it would depend on your perspective. But what do we know the reality of the election to be? 365 to 173. Four years later, 2012 rolls around, and they don't learn from history. Here come the polls. Romney, far more qualified than Obama. Oh, it's been a terrible four years. 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, it's been terrible. 51, 45. And people are like, oh, well, look, if the, me- if the liberal media is saying Romney's winning, it's, it's going to be a runaway. It's going to be a runaway. This is a uh, Chandra Pooch. This was a Cal State Fullerton showing Obama, and this is super liberal area, showing Obama 51.8, Romney 48.1. Very close race. I know, I know. Here's what we'll do. Here's what will win. Here's what will get people to wake up and and defeat Barack Obama. We'll call him a Marxist. We'll call him a Marxist. We'll we'll tie him to some very controversial figure, John, Jeremiah Wright. That'll do it. That'll do it. We'll even get the, the pretty hotties in the tight little dresses over at Fox News to talk about it. And then we'll tie him to Benghazi. That should have some relevance for you, given what happened today. We'll tie him to Benghazi. Oh my gosh, this is the end of Obama. This is it. This is it. Even CNN, after the debate, Romney just crushed Obama, just absolutely destroyed it. 67% of people watching CNN thought Mitt Romney won the debate against Barack Obama. It's not even close now. It's over. But what do we know actually happened? What do we know? actually happened. People woke up the next morning. The right-wing pundits were just absolutely apoplectic. Lock her up. They need to be arrested. Lock her up. They need to be arrested. I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to share something with you that should make everyone wake up because it's not going to be me saying it. It's not going to be me saying it. You're going to hear Donald Trump say something that is going to blow your mind. I mean that. But it's awfully hard when you see what they've done. These people are so evil. And at the same time, the country can come together. You know, I'm saying this, but the country can come together. You famously said regarding Hillary Clinton, lock her up. You declined to do that as president. I beat her. It's easier when you win. And they all said lock her up. And I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me. And so I may feel differently about it. I can't tell you, I can, I'm not sure I can answer the question. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up. Okay, then we won. And I say, and I said pretty openly, I say, all right, come on, just relax. Let's go. We're going to make our country great. Every time I mention her, everyone screams lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. They keep screaming. And you know what I do? I've been nice. But after watching that performance last night, such lies, 
I don't have to be so nice anymore. I used to say just a couple of weeks ago, let's just beat her on November 8th. But you know what? You have a point. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Oh, she's crooked, folks. She's crooked as a $3 bill. Okay, here's one. Just came out. Lock her up is right. Lock her up. For what she's done, they should lock her up. She's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. So crooked Hillary, wait. Crooked that you should lock her up, I'll tell you. Lock up the Bidens. Lock up Hillary. Lock them up. Isn't that amazing? To see the man say, I never said lock her up. I never said lock her up. And then there's the receipts. Now, I'll give you the link to this. I've shown it before, but I think I'm going to call this an assignment. President Trump leads standing ovation for the Clintons. This was after he won in 16. He talked about how honored he was to have the Clintons at the breakfast and led the entire room in a standing ovation for them. World Economic Forum. I'll give you the link to this too. That's been kind of a knock on other people. Just remember, folks, this has happened before. This has happened before. And make absolutely no mistake whatsoever about blood being thicker than water, so to speak. None of it's going to matter. None of it's going to matter. It was tried against Obama. Everything people are trying to throw, people on the right, are trying to throw against Kamala Harris is going to bounce right off, just like it did Obama. George Santayana. History is always written wrong, and so always needs to be rewritten. What is interesting is brought forward as if it had been central and efficacious in the march of events, and harmonies are turned into causes. Kings and generals are endowed with motives appropriate to what the historian values in their actions. Plans are imputed to them, prophetic of their actual achievements, while the thoughts that really preoccupied, preoccupied them remain buried in absolute oblivion. Of the peculiarities of recent speculation, especially in America, is that ideas are abandoned in virtue of a mere change of feeling. Without any new evidence or new arguments, we do not nowadays refute our predecessors. We just pleasantly bid them goodbye. And those who understand history are condemned to watch other idiots. Repeat it. So, don't kill the messenger. I just remember the Tea Party. I remember what happened in 2008. I remember what happened in 2012. Quite clearly, everybody made the exact same arguments against Barack Obama that they are making against Kamala Harris, and they didn't work. They didn't work because you're dealing with an emotional group of people. Americans. Everything's about emotions, not thought. And she is going and going to be much better at evoking positive emotions in support of her campaign than Donald Trump will be at evoking negative emotions and standing himself up as the savior. That was the mistake McCain made. That was the mistake Romney made. People are saying, oh, this whole joy thing, this whole joy thing is not going to work. It's going to work flawlessly. Because it's already worked. Twice. 
and I'll say this again, Rush Limbaugh, God rest his soul, said the same thing about Barack Obama that everybody is saying about Kamala Harris now. There's nothing to Obama, nothing but platitudes. When it's time to get to the substance, we get contradictions and confusions. We don't think that he knows what he's talking about because it's true, he doesn't. Calling him a community organizer, failed. Polling, failed. No matter who it was. Calling him a Marxist, failed. Attaching him to Jeremiah Wright, failed. Attaching him to Benghazi, failed. All of it failed. Even the debate, even the saying he lost a debate, failed. All of it failed. Because people are not learning from history. It's a popularity contest. It's a popularity contest. I'll leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. And please, if you have the ability, join us. Patreon. Could definitely use the support these days. If you value these kind of videos, if you'd like to get read in, go to the next level, so to speak, it's only a dollar. It's only a single dollar. And that's not per video, per month. That's it. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.